please welcome Director, City Science Initiative and Changing Places Group, MIT Media Lab, Kent Larson. Good morning. So I'm, I'm going to give you an update on some of the work we're doing right downstairs uh, here at the Media Lab. Um, so we frame this as uh, a city science initiative, a network of uh, cities that we're collaborating with to explore what enables high performance entrepreneurial districts in cities. And so I want to ask you, what is the greatest challenge we're facing uh, of our era? And this, these things are usually on the list. Climate change, energy, economy, wealth, uh, health, food, water. Uh, I would uh, propose that uh, actually it's urbanization because unless we address the systems and the settlement patterns uh, for cities going forward, it will be very difficult to address these uh, particular challenges. 90% of population growth will take place in cities from here on out. So the, we're working on three main systems in our group. One is what we generally call city scope. This is an evidence-based design, simulation, decision-making platform. Uh, we're also looking at mobility on demand. We're uh, on a mission to find alternatives to private cars, shared use systems in particular, and new places of living and work. That's particularly to address the challenges of equity and diversity in cities. To make progress on this, we formed a network of cities around the world. The blue dots there are the current projects that we have. The red ones are completed, and the yellow ones, mostly in the south, uh, are new collaboration agreements that we're currently working on. I'll just talk about three of these. Cambridge, Hamburg, Shanghai. Shanghai is our newest project. Uh, it uh, is a project to model creative entrepreneurial communities. This is the old model in China, which is single function, auto-centric tower sprawl. Separate all the functions and connect everything by cars, and this is the experience of being in a city like Beijing or Shanghai today. Uh, it's really not working. Uh, we have a collaboration agreement with Tongji University, and this is the district now that we're working on around Tongji. This is a street in that district. The new model is complexity, shared resources, creative interaction, strategic infill, privileging uh, human dynamics. Uh, and we took a team over, we just launched this project, took a team over uh, a little over a month ago. And we worked with a whole army of Chinese students. The first day we did brainstorming, decided on the area that we, we would focus on. Then we built a three-dimensional Lego model. Then we sent a team of students out to do mapping and visualizations. We built a room where we put hardware projectors to project visualizations, simulations on a three-dimensional model. And, uh, and then on the fifth day, we had a demo party and we presented this work to the Vice Minister of Education. These are some of the simulations that the student did. This was all in, in five days. And I'll talk a little bit more about this platform that we built in a minute. Hamburg, Germany, another project uh, that uh, we're quite excited about. In fact, I think this is a project where we, we've had the greatest uh, impact, this community decision-making to create housing for refugees. This is a pro-refugee rally in Hamburg. Uh, you may know that Hamburg was facing what they thought was as many as 80,000 refugees coming into the city. We've had trouble accommodating 12,000 in the entire U.S. The um, mayor had three criteria. And by the way, this is the kind of temporary shelters where the refugees were living. That man there is responsible for settling them. The mayor had three criteria. Totally bottom-up decision-making process as to where to put the refugees. One. Two, no ghettos, refugees e evenly distributed, and three, every district rich and poor has to share equally. So we built a new tool where uh, we projected maps of available land color-coded by environmental uh, conditions, uh, zoning, et cetera. We invited community groups. We had 30 people 
uh, at a time, show up for workshops. We did 44 of these workshops, and the process was they would collectively identify interesting sites. They'd put these little plastic black pieces on the site. That's a zoom window. It enlarges that area on a second table. We have optically tagged Lego modules. Uh, that uh, allowed people to experiment, to iterate, to place these objects that represented number of units, et cetera. They'd get real-time feedback as to accessibility to jobs and schools and mass transit. And then they would all come back and discuss the results. Uh, that little uh, chart up there shows how the different districts were faring. They had some friendly competition. What this did was empower the people that wanted to creatively engage and disempower those people that just wanted to come and argue. And uh, The Atlantic wrote this article, Germany's Radical Pro-Refugee Urban Planning Experiment. To me, it wasn't that radical. It was pretty obvious. But we came to realize that the community engagement aspect of urban design is probably the most important. We're now working on a new model district that would bring together creative Germans with entrepreneurial uh, immigrants. Cambridge, Kendall Square. This is a project that we've uh, been working on off and on for quite a while. Uh, we built a couple of years ago a big city scope model of Kendall Square. You see the media lab here where we are, and the Volpe site, which is one of the biggest undeveloped sites in any major city in the US. Now, interestingly, MIT just last fall was selected as the developer for this site based on their bid, and they're now going through a design process. So what we did, we took our model, we, divide, we, we, we took the area of the Volpe site and we carved out a zone where we can have our optically tagged Lego bricks and then we can project onto that visualization, simulations, et cetera. This is the old model of community evaluation of urban design, which is really more image based. And our mission is to move towards more of a data driven evidence based process. This is the essential tool that we're using, math models where we can calculate density, diversity, proximity and energy in a fine grained way. Uh, and uh, we, we looked at Kendall Square compared to Harvard Square. So you see Kendall Square where MIT is in blue. Very high em employment density and actually employment diversity, but extremely poor housing density and housing diversity. So you see MIT, Kendall Square is a little better in some areas, Harvard's better in others. And the process now that we're proposing is something like this. You see we have the radar plot which updates in real time as you make changes on the table with these optically tagged modules and then an isometric gives you some sense of the massing and uh, we have other tools that we can use. We can swap out different designs and we're now exploring the possibility of a community engagement process to work through these complex issues. Uh, for example, what can you do? Here we, we uh, as an experiment, took the Barcelona grid because I just like the master plan and it's easy to model. And we uh, are looking at millennials in blue, mid-career people in yellow, senior executive people, wealthier people in red. We're moving micro units from the less expensive part of the city to the, to the center of the city and looking at the mixing of people, diversity, and the density of people uh, <clears throat> interacting in carefully located places. So that brings together those three parameters that we think are so important, density, proximity, diversity. In this case, we're mapping to a module micro units, we, we can map actual floor plans or any kind of data to these modules. In this case, 22 by 22 meters at the scale of the Volpe site, that's 12 micro units per floor. So 240 units in a 20 story building. So what do we, what do we mean by micro units? Uh, well, this, this is actually the unit that we're proposing in that little module. We're using architectural robotics to allow a small space to function as, as if it was much bigger. So here's the sleeping configuration, dressing configuration, dining, uh, etc. We uh, right downstairs, actually literally 
one floor below us, we built a prototype of a 200 square foot micro unit. In this case, we use the architecture robotics to transition effortlessly from a queen size bed to an office, to a dining room for six people, to a living room for six people. We have a very small bathroom, but it can expand to be handicap accessible. And uh, it was actually a lot of fun. Now we launched a company called Ori Systems to commercialize these types of systems. This is an Airbnb apartment that we operate downtown Boston. We've had something approaching 100 people stay there. And you see this young woman wakes up. She just puts her bed away by hitting a button. We can actually automate this. She collapses her bedroom to create a big living room. And this is all just as simple as opening and closing a door. So we've designed a whole series of these infill modules. The interface has presets for li <coughs> living, dressing, and, uh, and, and uh, sleeping. Uh, and uh, it, can, it can all be automated in inter interesting ways. Mobility on demand, also mention just briefly what we're doing here. This is a new three-wheel bike-like autonomous vehicle that we launched at the Consumer Electronics Show. We have a collaboration agreement uh, in Taipei with Taipei Tech. We have a, a lab there where we're building these vehicles. Now the idea is that it's like an Uber system. You call for it on your phone. It comes to you wherever you are. You can then take it to your destination. And then it goes off on its own to pick somebody else up. If you're disabled or elderly, you can uh, move autonomously. This is in uh, Taipei at the Taiwan Air Force Base where we tested these on a street network without cars. And we can, do, we can do modeling. So this is Kendall Square looking at private cars. Everything in red is a parking lot. Incredible waste of land parking. If you move the shared systems, you can essentially get rid of maybe half the parking, <coughs> fewer vehicles. The big advantage is when you go to shared autonomous vehicles, get rid of all the parking, uh, except where they, they're charged or stored at night. And here we're toggling, you see the streets are in red, we're toggling from private cars to our mobility on demand PEV systems, the street goes green, that means you can increase the density more. So this is a, the radar plot of the design now proposed by MIT, it's the inner ring is what is here now. That little expansion of blue is the improvement on all these metrics with the design they've uh, proposed. The little process that we went through to look at one scenario expanded that dramatically, but it also increased the density quite dramatically, particularly the density. Right now, we, uh, market rate housing is fine. We have inclusionary housing that builds a small amount for poor people, but everybody in between, families, millennials, workforce, are left without housing options in a place like Candle Square. So we're looking at these scenarios, and then of course we can do studies of uh, solar radiation, wind flow, things like this. Eventually, we want to pull all this complexity together to an interface that lay people could negotiate through in the kind of workshops that we did in Hamburg. So in the end, a lot of people have a lot of good ideas for systems. They're, they're good simulation tools for particular systems. The big challenge is now modeling the integration of these systems with a focus on complex human dynamics in cities with an emphasis on what enables jobs, quality of life, and what creates a high performance district with respect to uh, energy and resource consumption. So thank you. That's our mission.